Starla. I'm it. And we are Our Fan Plays Games. Games. Yeah. <laughs> and welcome back. Yes, I'm excited. Another Let's week. go. Let's go. <laughs> You're excited. I'm excited for this episode. Really? Yes. Well, this yes, episode took a lot of work to get yes, about. Yes, a lot of work. Yes, to a bring it to fruition. Yes. We had to work. We had to work. Yeah. And it ain't done because we still got stuff to go on. <laughs> doing. Yeah, it ain't done. So this week, everybody. Yes. Uh, of course, we've got our regular show, yes. but this week we're doing something a little different. Yes. We decided to start to rate our games of 2022. Yes. So instead of just doing a top 10 or a top 20, yeah. we're going to give you a rating. Yes. On a scale of 1 to 10. Yes. Where does that game fall? Yes. And we did categories. And we did all well, that. Well, we have criteria. Yes. And we'll explain that more as we get into the heart of the episode. But we're going to give you our rating from our honest opinion yes. on these games. And let me tell you, we surprised ourselves. Yes, because I was honest. Yeah. I was really but honest. But we surprised ourselves because it's so easy to say, okay, it's the top 10 or whatever. Yeah. But then you have these other games that could be in that same spot. So to actually put some numbers to paper yes. and have a formula and a calculation, it's like, wow, I thought this game would rate higher. But Me too. But when you start yeah. to look yeah. at it, yeah. it didn't rate as high as we thought. Because some of these games are some of the hottest out there. Mm -hmm. But when you really put pen to paper, really think about mm -hmm. and go through the categories, yeah. you're like, oh. Yeah. Okay. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun, but but overall, it's I didn't not know I was gonna get thought. that score. Exactly. You know, that, that surprised me. So yes. we surprised ourselves. Yes, we did. So make rated games. Mm -hmm. I've rated my games. Yes. And then we have an overall score. Yes. From our combined final scores. Yes, I'm excited. Yes, I'm excited. But before we get into all of that good stuff. Yes. Let's hear a word from our awesome sponsors, Upper Deck. Yep. KTBG. Yes. And Board and Dice. Here we go, family. Upper Deck produces a collection of premium games for fans of all genres. Their games are just what you're looking for. Whether it's a game packed with superheroes fighting villains, secret spies saving the world, or a game filled with magic and potions. Relive some of your beloved moments in film with games from their legendary series and Versus System two-player card games. Join Fantastical Adventures in Upper Deck's original games like Dungeon Draft and Keepers of the Quest Star. Upgrade any trading card game or collectible card game with Marvel character card sleeves and playmats from their gaming accessory line. Take your game space to the next level with colorful, fan-worthy gallery prints. Dive into Upper Deck games and enjoy hours of adventure. For more information, visit UpperDeckStore.com. a blast with your family and friends with games from Kids Table Board Gaming. They have a variety of games to choose from, such as Power Plants, Creature Comforts, Wreck Raiders, and Fossilus. These games bring the fun to the table. KTBG is making casual games for the serious gamers and serious games for the casual gamers. To view all the games in their catalog, visit KidsTableBG.com. Gordon Dice designs, develops, and publishes family and strategy board games. Their goal is to make interesting and diverse games that everyone can enjoy. Known for their tea games such as Tabanusi, Tawa Tensuyu, Tekanu, and Teotihuacan City of Gods, and their most recent crave-worthy releases are Terracotta Army, Talatum, Origins First Builders, Mandala Stones, and Zapotec just to name a few. If you're looking for challenging games that will give you and your family hours of enjoyment, look no further than Board and Dice. To check out their entire catalog of games and products, visit BoardAndDice.com.
Upper Deck. Upper Deck got some stuff going on, yes. family. They got some stuff going on. Yes, they do. This yes. past week, they brought out Space Jam, A New Legacy, mm -hmm. the Serververse Showdown. Yes. With the little Looney Tunes characters. You're going to be doing the movie, y'all. Y'all yes. going to be playing basketball with the movie yes. and some cards. I like that because you're going to be able to uh, play with uh, LeBron James. Yes, you are. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we put a post out on our socials mm -hmm. last week. So it has a lot of detail about what's going on. So you go check out our social media page. But in the meantime, look for this game. Yes. <laughs> But Starla, yeah. family, we got a giveaway with Upper Deck. Boy, it's gonna be a good one. In celebration of the Marvel movie, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which is coming out on February 17, 2023, Upper Deck is gonna give away some good prizes. There's three different legendary products, a legendary core set, the legendary Ant-Man expansion, and the legendary Annihilation expansion where Kang the Conqueror is a mastermind. Now, to enter this contest, you have to email us at contact at ourfanplaysgames.com, subject line, Upper Deck Contest. Now, don't give us your address. If you win, we'll definitely get your address then. But the contest is gonna run from January 29th to February 15th. So come on and join in. And I am so excited because on February 19th, family, we're going to announce the winner. Yes. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this movie. Yes. Because we get to finally see Kang the Conqueror in his full evil glory. Exactly. Yes. I cannot wait for that. But I'm yes. excited about this giveaway. So if you want a game like this, be mm -hmm. sure to send in your information. Yes. Email us. Yes. Game expansions uh, in celebration yes. of the movie. I cannot exactly. wait for that. Yes, yes, yes. All but, right. And KTBG. Yes. Now, finally, <laughs> Power Plants, the one Ooh. of the latest games, yes. is coming to retail on February 8th. So family, mm -hmm. check it out because it's a good game. So it check is. it out. Definitely. And maybe there'll be a Starla flower in no, the future. Uh, 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 we, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. We, we don't know. Don't we know. don't know. <laughs> and then also, you know, Board and Dice, they doing some things. Books of Time puts a unique and exciting twist on tableau building, allowing you to construct three great books, each with their own set of special abilities that you can write thereby creating incredible combinations. The story of a civilization is now truly at your fingertips. I cannot wait to see Books of Time. Yes, I cannot wait to see that. It seems really, really interesting, mm -hmm. and I cannot wait to check that out. Yes. But you know, just like you know, we were talking about the games mm -hmm. of 2022, we're gonna talk about that today, mm -hmm. is one game that we've been sleeping on yes. with Board and Dice, mm -hmm. and that's Terracotta Army. Terracotta Army. Yes. Awesome game. Awesome game. We finally yes. got it on the table. Yes. And we love it. We love it. We played it a few times. <laughs> we love it so much. Yes. The components are great. Yes. The gameplay mechanics yes. are great. It is a great game. If you have not played it yet and it's sitting on your shelf of opportunity, take it off and put it on the table. And it's not so, you know, board and dice games can be tough, mm -hmm. but this one is not as tough as you think. This yes. one, I think you can really get into, you know, it's not easy, yeah. but it is, it's a strategic game. It's yes, really it good. Is. And a lot, you know, I heard some people say it's almost like a chess match. It is. You know, mm -hmm. it's almost like a chess match because mm -hmm. you got to go back and forth. You try to get, mm -hmm. you know, majority in different things. So it is a good one. Don't sleep on it. Do not Terracotta sleep on Army. it. No, do, do not. not. No. Yes. So next up, everybody, is the weight loss journey. Let's do this. I'm excited. Well, we are on this weight loss yes, journey. Yes, we are. It's a difficult journey. Yeah, well, you got us in these torture sessions, <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Well, we need them. We need them. It's tough. Yes, we do need them. We do. Yes, we do. We because we feel good after they're done. Uh, uh, it's just okay. going through the process. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's the process. Yeah, the process. You all know, right. and, and I'm not even upset that this past week I only lost 0.8 after all the torture yes. sessions and going on the treadmill. Yes. I only lost 0.8, but I know I feel better. But guess what I lost? Mm. Family, guess what I lost? 2.6. Yes. 2.6 pounds. Mm. Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. I'm happy. 
Yes, well, the only good thing is that we're not going back to Weight Watchers no, right no, now. No, no, So I don't have to hear him yell that inside no. of the Weight Loss Center no. at Weight Watchers. So right now, we're going to stick with our current uh, plan. Yes. And I don't have to hear him yelling. No, I just yell it at home. Yeah, how much he lost. I just yell at home. <laughs> And I talked to you, family. We talk, I talked to you. <laughs> but we got to yes. say the journey's going strong. Yes, it is. We are just in the beginning stages yes. of it. I think this is our fourth week. It's a fourth week. Our fourth week. I feel and good. I feel great. I just, you know, afterward, you mm -hmm. know, but, you know, eating good, some good food. Eating good food. But it's those, those workouts are tough, yeah, though. Yeah, but that's, that's what the journey's all about. You know, we let ourselves get into the situation. Those so now workouts are tough. They're tough, and we've got to go through it. We got to go through it. Yeah, we got to go through it. You're doing it. a good thing, though, boy. You you toughed <laughs> it out, boy. You be toughing it out, boy. I do. Family, you be proud of her. <laughs> you be proud of her. She be doing her thing, yes. you know. Got the trainer feel, be, you know, yelling at her. She be doing her but thing. But I, I keep going. I yeah. don't give up. You don't. I go all the way to the end. I don't yeah. try to cheat it. If we got to do 12 reps of you do it. throwing the kettlebell or whatever, or swinging the kettlebell, yeah. I do it. She do it. I do she it. Do it. She, you know, she do it. She don't give up. I and love you don't that. either. You out no, there no. doing what you got to do. Uh, I think sometimes you put on too much weight, though. I might. Yeah. I, I, I think I, you need to lower I kind of, you know, I kind of go back to my football days, and I'm like, nah, I don't need to do that. And, and you your know? younger days. You're yeah. not younger. I'm not younger. No, I'm not younger <laughs> no more. I need to stop so, yeah, all that. You know, you need to lower the weights a little bit. Yes. I mean, for me, I don't try to get heavy, heavy weights. Yeah. I'm not trying to bulk up. I'm just trying to tone. Yeah, just like, uh, you know, the trainer was talking about, get some more weight. No, no, mm -mm. no, no, no. <laughs> We're not. We're that's, not gonna get more weight. That's for the younger people in our class. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna get more weight. No, no. But we are enjoying this yes, journey, and I hope you guys who are on it with us are having yes. a good time as well. And just keep us posted on how you're doing. All yeah, right. Yeah, let us know what you, you how you guys are doing on your weight loss journey. You know, let us know, family. We're all in this together. Yes, we are. We're all in this <laughs> together. So next up is Ask or PG. All right, Mick, what questions do we have this week? All right, we got two. Okay. One's from Jonathan versus YouTube. Okay. Hey, Jonathan. Now, had, he asked, has there ever been a game that you didn't feel comfortable playing or reviewing? If so, why? Well, Jonathan, yes. we've talked about this before. Yes. Actually, when we first started our channel, this yes. was one of the games that bothered us. Yes. And we have never played it. And that's Freedom, the Underground Railroad. Yes. Uh, we've already told everybody we don't care for the game because they've turned slavery into a game. Yes. And for African Americans, you know, um, people from the African diaspora, slavery is just not a game for no. us. And I just no. don't want to see that played with on a table. You know, it's, it's not a game. It, it, it's American history uh, and it's our history and well, it's everybody's history because Anything we've touched in this country as African Americans, it's all American history. Uh, but it's not its not a game. It's not a game. If you don't want to do a game about the Holocaust and play with that, then we don't want you doing a game about slavery exactly. and playing with that. Totally agree. And so that's something that we have not played, mm -hmm. we will not play. And for those of you out there who are playing it and you're getting some kind of educational uh, value from it, that's great for you. But I hope that you're taking it seriously and understanding that slavery was real. Yes. It was painful. Yes. We're still living in the repercussions of yes. slavery. And it's just not a game. Yes. Now, for me, is Lewis and Clark. Now, yeah. we played a lot of Lewis and we Clark did. for we a little did. bit. Then all of a sudden, we kind of looked at it and said, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. This is really uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. And, you know, like they, they calling, you know, Native Americans Indians. Mm -hmm. And it should be Native Americans. Yeah. And then, you you know, how you fuel the cards. You utilize the you know, Native with, You know, with Native Americans yeah. and, the, and the little red, yeah. you know, meeples. It mm -hmm. just didn't feel comfortable anymore. Yeah, I, I think and, that yeah. when we first got it, we looked at it as a historical thing. Yeah. We were going on the Lewis and Clark Trail. Yeah. But then after we started to play with it and looked at how yeah. the Native Americans were being utilized, we, we had no. to stop playing it. Yeah. And I don't think that game has been on our table since. And that's oh, been, it has, it's been a long it's been time. It's probably seven, eight years now. And then, yeah. you know, I felt a little bit better. You know, mm -hmm. at one point I felt better when they said, oh, we're going to reprint it. We're going to mm -hmm. do something else. 
But then they didn't change nothing. Yeah. And it, it, I, got, I was so disappointed about yeah. it. And I'm like, well, sh- missed opportunity. You, you know, miss, a big missed opportunity. Yeah. And I'm like, you just kept it the same. Yeah. So, I mean, we, so we can't play it. We, we can't so, play yeah. it. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that one I don't feel comfortable playing yep. and at we all. And we will not play it. And we won't play it. So, yep. that's another one. And mm-hmm. it's a, re- you know, it's a really good game. Yeah. But just can't play it. It's just mm-hmm. it's not right what they're doing with, you know, Native American That's history. True. Yeah. That's true. So we just leave that one alone. Mm-hmm. But good questions, it though, was Jonathan. A good, good question. question. Good Thank question. You. Next one. Zod Tan from YouTube. Okay. I notice sometimes that Starla seems to look uh, seems to look exasperated when Mick gets board games. Is there a limit to your board game collection beyond which Starla says no more board games, at least until you call? Is there a limit? Yes. No, yes. it's not a limit, There's family. A limit. It's not a limit. It's not a limit. It's yes. not there, a there, limit. No. There is a limit. There's not a limit. And I think we exceeded that limit about 400 games ago. There's no limit. There's a limit. There's a limit. And and where the limit come from? Well, you don't want to call. What? He doesn't want to call. Uh, Very few games get. I don't. Well, you don't call. You don't like to call. Well, let me tell you something, uh, family. Family. I've been thinking about it, family mm. and Starla, mm. that we might have to call. What? Yes. We might You're gonna to. actually go through. I'm seriously and thinking take about out it. those games. I'm seriously thinking about it because there's some games that we're not gonna get back to the table mm. ever, and they're just sitting there and they need to be in good homes. So I'm seriously considering culling games. I will believe it when I see it. Family, I'm I'm seriously thinking about it. I'm seriously yes. thinking about it. I can't wait till yeah. that happens. Yeah, because I'm I'm kind of looking at some. I'm like. Uh-huh. Is it ever coming back to the table? And I'm like, probably not. Mm. So why is it here? Uh-huh. You know, it might be, so, you know, yeah. someone else might get enjoyment from they it. They just might. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, you would agree. agree you would that. agree. Yes. You would but agree. again, I will believe it when I see it. Yes. And when it happens, you'll hear it. Yes, you'll hear, you'll hear about it from it us. If we going to call. <laughs> Yes, you'll hear about it. So yeah, good, good questions. Yes. Uh, good question. Thank you yes, so yes. much. Thank you so much. That's all I got. That's it. That's all it. All right. So we're gonna go into some board game news. Here we go. All right, Mick. What do we have in the news this week? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Your, your sound effects. What? My goodness. It's good. Oh, my goodness. It's good. Okay, this year. What? Why don't we talk to Grant about giving no, you no. a sound effect? No, I like making my sound. Uh, okay. Love my sound. Yes. All right, what, what's up Love my news? sound. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't have much. Okay. Now, I do have some sad news, though. Okay. I have a couple of sad news. Mm-hmm. Now, one, now Fun Again Games mm-hmm. has a game business and two retail stores, and they also have a logistics and distribution mm-hmm. uh, side. Unfortunately, their logistics and distribution side is closing its doors on April 30th, 2023. So they have to go ahead and start shutting down, and mm-hmm. they're telling, you know, uh, retailers, Ooh. and they're telling, you know, other publishers. Mm-hmm. Make another other arrangements because they're closing down. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, it's, it's pretty yeah, sad. sad. So you know, mm-hmm. and they said it's just operational cost and weighing mm-hmm. on is weighing on the business. Mm-hmm. So you know, there you go. Because there's a mm-hmm. lot of things going on that a lot of publishers are having issues with. Yeah. I think a couple of episodes back we talked about that. We did, yeah. You know, so this might be well, some of the so the consequences hear. of mm-hmm. this changing you know environment for publishers yeah. and distribution and all that mm-hmm. you know in the industry. Yeah. So we hate to see that happen. We do. You know, but Fun Again Games, the website and their, their the website in the game business is still going. Oh, yeah, well, that's just good. Let you know. They're still okay, going. That's good. Yeah. Sad, sad news. Okay. French des- uh, French board game designer Serge Leggett, mm-hmm. he died just recently. Okay. And his credits include Shadows of Camelot, which is a very big game. Mm. We didn't we haven't played it, but it's a big game. And then Nat Valier, Nat Valier mm-hmm. that I do have the game. Mm-hmm. A lot of people say it's a really great game for what it does. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna still play it because okay. I want to try it out. And then Mysteries of the Abbey. Mm. It's they said it was a serious illness. Oh. But a lot of people didn't really know that he really had a serious mm. I- illness because just like with French designer Bruno F- Fiducci, mm-hmm. who made Citadels, which we love, yes. yeah. he said that Serge was a nice guy. Mm-hmm. He was mindful, attentive, 
and discreet. Mm. So that's why we probably didn't know he was having a serious yeah. illness because he was very discreet. Mm -hmm. And we just hate that, you know, we say, you know, we give prayers to his family mm -hmm. and we're just so sorry to hear about this. But, you know, I'm definitely going to try that one game. And I've always wanted to play Shadows over Camelot because yeah. it's a really great hit yeah. trader game. So that that's we should really sad to hear about that. Okay. But here's some good news. Okay, good news. Now, Azul. We love Azul. Yes. We love Azul. Well, Plan B Games, the publisher of Azul, said they're coming out with a miniature travel version of the board game. Oh, okay. And, and if you look at the pictures, it's really cute, family. Ooh. It is really cute. Now, it's not a pocket size edition, but it does fit into a bag. Wow, that's a good idea. So like that's that. a really good. So, mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of people saying, well, do I really need, you know, if I have a ton of Azuls, do I need this Azul? And I say yes. For me, yes, because if you want a travel edition, because mm -hmm. you really can't put a big old box of Azul, mm -hmm. you know, in your suitcase or something, because that'd take up too much room. Well, especially if you're traveling by plane. Yes. It'll take up a lot of space. Yes. But if you're traveling by car, maybe you can take your bigger boxes. Maybe, yeah. But games that are travel size, you can put into your bag, you know, especially, again, if you're going by train, mm -hmm. I mean by plane, or train, Yeah. <laughs> you want to you have something that you can... You know, carry easy. And, and it's a really cute game. Yes. They really made it mm. cute. So I, I like that. Yeah. You know, because we love Azul. We do. And and to have like a little, you know, travel version. Yeah. That's cool. I think that's so cool. Too. So we're looking forward that to is that. Good news. And that's coming out the spring of 2023. Yes. Yes, yes, that yes. Sounds great. So what you got, Starla? All right. So if you haven't checked out OFPG Voices, yes. the most recent episode, episode 26. Yes. Be sure to do so. Yes. It is an awesome episode. And check out our contributors that are on there this week. And we just want to say thank you to our awesome contributors and our awesome sponsors. Yes. And our next episode will be out on February 8th. Yes, yes, yes. Now, one more thing. Marcus Ross, a local board game designer here in Omaha, and one of our family friends, and he's also a contributor on OFPG Voices, just helped design the Lord of the Rings adventure book games published by Ravensburger. And we just want to say Congratulations, Marcus. Yes. And this game is coming out at Target, and you can visit Target.com if you want to try to find it right away. But we want to say so, we're so proud of you, Marcus, and happy that you were able to be a part of that project with Ravensburger and their The Lord of the Rings adventure book. Yes, yes. I'm very excited to check it out, too. Yes. Yes, yes. So congratulations, Marcus. We love you now. Yes. We love you. Yes, yes. All right, so we're going into the heart of the episode. Here we go. All right, yes. now we are ready for the heart of the episode. Yes. Now we told you previously mm -hmm. that we're going to rate our game. Yep. Now normally we give you a top five or yeah. a top 10 right. or a top 20, yeah. but with these games, because mm -hmm. we played so many of them, yes, it it's hard to put them in a top five or a top 10. Yeah. So we thought, you know what, we're gonna try to rate the games mm -hmm. on a scale of one to 10, mm -hmm. with 10 being the best and one being the worst. And we're going to give you that score. Yes. Now, for those games that scored a, t a nine or higher, they're going to get our seal of approval called an OFPG endorsement. Yeah, yeah. And we used a rating system where we covered artwork, mm -hmm. gameplay, yes. mechanics, yes. replay, ability, or the desire to play it, mm -hmm. and the theme. Yes. And so we put a number in those categories, and then we averaged it out, and then we got our final score. Yes. And then for our overall rating, the ones that are eligible for an OFPG endorsed uh, seal of approval, uh, we took my score and mixed score, put them together, got an average, and that's where we get that score. Yes. So we'll go through all of that with you. Hopefully it's not too confusing, but we'll definitely have some graphics up at the end so you can see what our final scores are, okay? Y'all know Greg gonna do his thing. <laughs> You know that family. All right, so we're in yeah. alphabetical order. Okay. We started with the number games, mm -hmm. yes. and then we went down to the first half of the F game. Yes. So that way, if you're looking for these games in the future, you'll know, okay, show one, because we're doing this in three parts, yes. had the numbers to the letter F. And then the next show will have the middle of the Fs all the way to another letter. So alphabetical order, okay? Yes, yes. All right, Mika, you ready to get started? Let's do this. All right. Yes. So first on our list. Here we go. Is 3,000 uh, Scoundrels yes. by Unexpected Games. Yes. Now, my overall yes. was a 4.2. Woo! 
Yeah, we had issues. We with had the, issues with the mechanics yes. and some with the gameplay. Well, I had I had it at six. Mm. Because you know it was the the Western theme really didn't come out. I, I didn't get it. You know, yeah. and then you know it, it was yeah. too short. It was short. You, and all the scoundrels, because it had a really mm -hmm. cool. You know, you put you know like different little mm -hmm. uh, like cards in. Yeah. You know, transparent cards to really make different you know scoundrels, and mm -hmm. it was a really neat system. Yeah. But you couldn't get all the scoundrels. No, you couldn't. And then you know all the tech, all the Western tech or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, because this it, mm -hmm. premise is, is that this traveler came, this 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 uh, futuristic guy mm -hmm. came into the West and was given all this, you know, futuristic, you know, stuff. And, you know, a lot of people in the West was trying to find all mm -hmm. this stuff, but it was all in safes. Yes. And, and really the, the tech wasn't even there. I, I, I didn't even care for the safe aspect that yeah. you got to get it out of the safe. It and then, just didn't work with And there's like three rounds. Mm -hmm. Or in the, you know, if you're mm. starting the game up, you know, for the first time, mm. you only do two rounds. Right. But you only could get a safe, one safe in the first round, mm -hmm. then two in the other, and you yeah. got all these safe. It was just. It was. It wasn't. That it was a lot going on. It's just didn't it make like, sense. It, just, it was it not wasn't that cohesive. Fun. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't, it that wasn't fun. cohesive at all. So yeah. that's why I got a low rating for yeah. me, and I guess a low rating from you. Yeah, I did. And, and then you know, like in December of 2022, mm. the designer put out. You know, optional rules mm -hmm. to try to. You know, I guess he heard a lot of the. You know, uh, the criti a, lot, a lot of criticism yeah, about it, about the and game. then he put out optional rules to kind of mm -hmm. beef up the game better. But yeah. that's too late, man. Yeah, and we didn't play with the optional rules. Yeah. We played with the original game, and again, it just didn't get a good score. No, nah, I was disappointed because yeah. I was really looking forward to that mm -hmm. game. It was uh, it was on a lot of people's anticipated mm -hmm. lists. Yeah. And I was just like, oh man. So yeah, I was yeah. disappointed. In so it. that's three thousand yeah. scoundrels, and yeah. then our overall rating for the game is five point one. Yeah, five point one. Five point yeah. one. Five point one. Yeah. All right. So next on the list is Acropolis. Yes. By Gigamic Games. Yes. And, and Hatchet Games. And too. Hatchet Games. Yeah. And I gave it an overall score of nine. Really? Yes. You like it, huh? Love Acropolis. Yes. It's a city building game. Yes, it is. And you it's get a tile, a, tile it's, game. It's a city building game and you're using it's tiles. tiles yes. And you get a chance to create different quadrants in your yes. city. Yes. And they have different colors and you have different uh, uh, multipliers for yes. that particular yes. type of color. So you've got your uh, boundaries that I think is in red. Yeah, the red, you yeah. can't go, you, you, can, you gotta keep it on the edge. Yes, on the edge. Yes. And so what you try to do is you try to get as many points as you can by having the multipliers in there and having a lot of colors all grouped yes. together. I loved it. It's a wonderful tile laying yeah. game. Acropolis is a nine for me. I gave it a 7.8 because, what? yeah, because the, the mechanics and the gameplay is cool. I, I love that family, but the art was kind of just well, like. That was my low one too. The yeah, the art, art was kind of like, eh, okay. But you not know. that low. Yeah. Oh, no. The art was kind of like, yeah. I think okay, it was kind of cool. basic. Yeah, it was, was kind of basic. basic you know, like, yeah. yeah. And I think that's what hit it for me is the art. You know, yeah. it's like, you could have did a whole lot more with the art, but I, I it was kind of like, so. okay, that's cool. Yeah, but I overlooked you know. the art because the gameplay was so Yeah, yeah, fun. the gameplay and mechanics mm -hmm. and the desire to play again because, I mean, we yeah. really like that game. Mm -hmm. We really like it, so yeah, yeah. So And our overall score for Acropolis was an 8.4. Yes, yes. Overall. Yes, it was, it was real good. And, and and just because it wasn't OFG endorsed, it's still a good game. It's a great game. It's, it's still, it's a, good still game. a great yeah. game. It's still a good game. All right. All right. Next one is Azul Master Chocolatier from Next Move Games. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what was your score? My score was a 7.4. It's Azul. It's Azul. It's Azul, family. Yep. And I Just gave in it, a I, different veneer. I gave it a 7.8. Yeah. And the reason why is, again, it's Azul, which yeah. we love. Yeah. But this game did not add anything. No. It was just like you said, it's just a Zool with a different skin on it. Yeah. Now, they did add it. a few different where, you know, the factory tiles were a little bit different to give you some, yeah. you know, different things that you have to do with the factory tiles. But it, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't no, like a no. Zool Queen's Garden. No, now, that no. One, that's 2.0. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. 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 You yeah, that, that's, 10, not a 2.0. No, no, no. It, it was a, a Zool 2.0. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but... but the chocolatier, yeah, and then we said that even the little, you know, the little tiles didn't mm. really look like chocolates. Yeah, they could have did a little bit more with the, you know, how it looked yeah, like chocolates. Yeah, so, yeah, just making it brown yeah. and tan didn't work. Yeah, yeah so work. replay value, I gave that a pretty low score. Yeah, because I mean, it's just it's Azul. Yeah, I agree. You know, yeah, I agree. yeah, just a little bit prettier. And yeah. our overall score for Azul was a seven point six. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. 
So next on our list is Batman Everybody Lies by Portal Games. Yes. And I gave it a 6.4. Wow. See, it, yeah. it, it's because it's co-op. Yeah. It's co-op. See, I gave it a 7.4 because mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty cool. It was The theme alone was big time. Well, that was my highest score. The yeah, theme. the theme alone was Everything big else time. was just middle of the road. And you know how you could go through it yeah. and it was like a storytelling game and you're just going through it trying to, you know, uh, solve, you know, mysteries and yeah. issues. But see, Batman's not there. I know. You got to take, you know, Batman's not in the game because yeah. you're trying to help, you know, Gotham City do things because Batman's missing. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. I, I, yeah. It was cool. It didn't it work cool. for me. I, the game, I mean, when we played it, I enjoyed it at first. But again, yeah. when you start to tear it down based on particular criteria, yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. lowers the whole, you know, value there, of the game. Because I think for replay value, it's not mm -hmm. really, because once you go through it, it's like... Yeah, do I want to do it again? Yeah, because mm -hmm. do I want to play another character? Because yeah. uh, I already know the story. Mm -hmm. If I do something... You know, so it's kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. the replay kind of not there. So I gave it a 7.4. And I think together, with us together, it was a 6.9. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So there you go. Everybody yes. lies. Batman, everybody lies. All right, this yeah. next one's on you. Oh, yeah, because I played this one. So I give the final word on this one. It's yeah. Burn Cycle from Chip Theory Games. I gave it a 9.3. Because it's, it's a excellent excellent game of kind of like just trying to you know you know move around and sneak and and you're not really trying to fight anything like that because usually in chip theory games you're fighting all the time mm -hmm. in this one you're in a futuristic world where you know robots you know are you know where we're running things and then all of a sudden they brought the humans back because mm -hmm. the humans were gone yeah. and now the humans lost their mind and being very evil so you're trying to fight all these these human corporations mm -hmm. by trying to sabotage and stop them from growing and it's really cool because mm -hmm. you're going into buildings trying to you know get stuff and sabotage and you gotta avoid you know the guards and stuff instead of fighting them mm -hmm. so it's really cool I really do enjoy it so it's a and then the, the production chip theory games I mean neoprene maps everywhere mm -hmm. chips are high quality mm -hmm. I mean it's just it's just wonderful so I gave it a 9.2 yeah I didn't do a rating on that yeah. game because I didn't play it yes so I don't have a rating for it yes so, so, so it gets so it gets OFP, OFPG endorsed. It gets the first one to get an OFPG yes. endorsed. Burn cycle. Seal of approval. Yes, burn <laughs> cycle. Love that game. Love it. If you can get it, get it, play it. Yes. Yes. So all right. So next, next on the list is Caper Europe yes. from Keymaster. Yes. Now I love Caper Europe. I, I did thought too. it was cute. I it thought was cool. the artwork was quirky. Yes. I enjoyed the mechanics. I would love to play it again. We haven't had a chance to play it, but I would love to. Gameplay was kind of, you know, easy. It was and, easy. You know, it was cool. You know, and I, I love the artwork. Yeah. Because the artwork gives me that, like, 60s vibe, mm -hmm. you know, on Pan Am Air. You mm -hmm. know, you're in Europe. You know, you're stealing stuff. You're, you're doing capers. And I can hear the Bossa Nova music playing, <laughs> you know, while you're doing some stuff. I don't stuff. hear Bossa Nova. I, I hear French music. Oh, you do? Yeah. But you're all over Europe, though. Well, that's true. You're all over. So, I, you know, I got that 60 vibe. You know, I like okay. that. You know, because right. you're doing that, that thievery. You're doing that thievery. Yeah. So, and, and I like the characters. The yeah. characters were cute. The characters so were cool. I, I, thought, I thought it was, the art was really really cute you yes. know so i really love the artwork so i gave that a high score yeah so in the end caper europe europe gets a nine yeah because it's a cool two-player game it is a cool you know going back game. and forth mm -hmm. you know trying to you know yeah. kind of you know area majority you're trying yeah. to you know be the one that can steal stuff from a different mm -hmm. location and you get all these cool gadgets that you're trying to use to help yes. you out so i do like that so yeah i gave it uh what was it uh, yeah 8.4 mm, so 8.4 i gave it a 8.4 <sighs> So would you give it? I gave it a nine. Okay. I liked it. Well, now the gameplay is kind of basic to me, like I said before. But I think it's a nice little game that it's we can cool. play, you know, yeah. play together. It's cool. It's not too taxing. No, you it's know? not too taxing. So it's just something that we cute. You can put on the table and yeah. Play. I thought that that was good. So I know? gave it eight point four. Okay, eight point four. Yeah. All right. The overall score for Caper Europe is eight point seven. Yeah. So that's cool. That's, that's respectable. That's yeah, respectable. I, think so I like too. it. Yeah. So the next one is All Me, mm -hmm. and that's Carnegie from Pegasus Spiel. Mm -hmm. Now I played that. Yes. And to me it gets an 8. Now it's a, it's it's a wonderful game. It's a it's a thinky, mm -hmm. you know, kind of heavy game. Love it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I gave the mechanics and replayability and also gameplay 9s. Mm -hmm. But the art. Yeah. Had to give it had to lower that art a little bit cuz the art is beige. Yeah. The game is beige. Mm -hmm. That's it family, it's beige. And you know, 
it's not really much color. Well, in the Gilded Age, it wasn't much color anyway, but they could have made a little color to the game. I guess so. I mean, right. I didn't get a chance to play yeah. uh, Carnegie, so I'm not giving that one a rating. Yes. So Mick gets the final rating. Yeah, and please. then I gave it, the theme. I gave a little low too because there's really no theme on there. Mm -hmm. It's not really. It's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's really fun. It's it's a Euro, Euro game. Yeah. But you know, the theme is not really there. Carnegie. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a good game, yeah. but it's not really no theme. You mm -hmm. know, you just because it's really fun where you know you're on the board, you're trying to do you know you know trying to move up some you know uh some different yeah. things on the board and you also you have this little player board where you're trying to make your company mm -hmm. you have a company you're trying mm -hmm. to get your people in your company and then try to add more departments to your company mm -hmm. and it's really fun yeah but and then you're also doing a little worker placement and yeah. you know on the board a uh, big board too but overall you know it's kind of you know it's, it's beige yeah, yeah. But it's still a good game, though. It's so still what was game. your score? My my score on that one was an eight. Okay, so that is the final score yeah, because again, eight. I didn't get a chance to rate. Yeah, that. and I still want you to play it, though. Okay. I still want you to play it. I still want you to play it. All right. So next up, yes, one of my favorites. Yes. Yes. Cat in the Box. Cat by in the Bezier Box. Game. Yes. And I gave Cat in the Box a nine point six. Cat in the Box is a card game. And it's based on the Schrodinger uh, theory about this cat being in the box, which, again, that really doesn't go with the theme of this game. The theme really doesn't work on this theory. But, I mean, they did put a research track thing down there, and I guess they were trying to tie it in that way. And you're talking about this little cat or whatever. There's a cat on the box. He's on the box, like, yeah. so I guess he's in the box. Yeah. But I really enjoyed that the cards are black and white, and yes. you get a chance to choose yes. the color of the card when you play it. Yes. And then on the research board, you've got these little acrylic uh, tokens. And when you choose that particular card, the number and the color, you put your token there. So on the research board, you're trying to group your tokens together so you can get additional points at the end of the round. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I'm a card player, so mm -hmm. a trick-taking game is mm -hmm. right up my alley, and that's mm -hmm. what this is, a trick-taking game. And I love the fact that you can assign the color of the card as you go. Yes. Now, the one thing you want to avoid is a paradox. And in Schrodinger's theory, he talks about being the cat being in the box with something that can kill it. That there's a paradox because when you're looking at the box you don't know if the cat's alive or dead so you have a paradox and so they put that into the game as yes. well uh which the paradox is you can't play the same card that's already been played so if you've already played an eight and you chose green and now at the round again and you don't have anything else to play but an mm -hmm. eight that's green mm -hmm. you've caused a paradox yes. and the game ends immediately yes but it's a wonderful trick-taking game. Wonderful. It's a yes. great game. Yes, and then they just put a cool a spin game. on it. Now, whether or not it, it matches up with Schrodinger's theory, it don't. don't think so, but no. it's cute. Yes. The cat on the box is cute. cute. It ain't that cute. And I gave it a 9.6. I gave it an 8.4. Shame on you. This is it's no point. theme. It wasn't a theme. There is a theme. It's no art. Okay. It's no art. Now listen, family. I love Cat in the Box. It, I can play it anytime, any day. You put that down. I'm playing Cat in the Box, but it's no art. The there art is, is no art. art. The box is so it's cute. It's no art, and it's no theme. Did you it's not no, see the box? It's no art. It's no theme. You didn't see the cat with the cute big it's eyes. It's an ugly cat, it's and the that cat's cat looked crazy. Ugly. I don't. It, it's no. It's no theme. It's no art. I, I it's this, love it's it. It's the game. It's the game. It's the mechanics and the game. I gave it a lower score on theme and art, but yes. everything else was tens across the but board. But it don't matter because our to a combined score is a nine, and it is RPG endorsed. Yes, it is. Yes, it's RPG endorsed. RPG endorsed. It is a great game. It is a great. It's game. It's a great game. It's, so you can yes. carry it easily. Yes. It's small. And when you put it on the table, you're going to have fun with it. Yes. And every time we put it out to play it, we've played it so many times at different cons. When people see it, they're intrigued. So I'm going to tell you now, even though you say there's no art, the artwork that they chose to use is intriguing. Okay. Cat in the box. But another thing is that the cards are not really quality. So you need to basically put them in, you know, 
card sleeves. A card sleeves, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cards can get so. beat up. Because so. you want to play it so much, mm. the cards will get beat up. It I would, guess yeah. I think that that would be something that I guess I should have really thought about the cards. Mm -hmm. But I, I couldn't ding this game because I just love it. Yeah, I had to ding it. it. I had to ding it. It's a great game. Just love great it. Great game, but I had to ding it. Yeah, but it still get ORP, ORPG endorsed. Yes, it does. It does. It does. It does. Yeah. All right, so next on our list is Catan, Dawn of Humankind. Yes. And for that one, I gave it a nine. It is a great really? game. Yeah, I love. I loved it okay. because it's a it's a reboot okay. of Settlers of the Stone Age, which yes. we love. We love because it's a different spin on Catan. And then they did. They also kind of did some different rules they to it. They did different rules and they added miniatures miniature, to it. Yes, they did. You know, so they beefed it up, yeah. and I thought it was really well done as a reboot. I, I, I loved it. I gave it an eight point two. What? Yeah, yeah. I gave it okay. a because it, it's Catan. You know, and and they they boosted it up a little bit. Yes, I gave the did. theme, and I gave you know the artwork cool, but you know it's still kind of Catan, and mm -hmm. it's a little bit of different spin, which is cool. Mm -hmm. But it's still got an eight point two. You know how you're moving out of Africa and you're moving towards the other continents and stuff. Yeah. It's really cool. And then you're moving up different tracks mm -hmm. to give you you know more you know uh, you know how you can go faster across. You know you can do more you know movement and things. And it's you gotta cool. have villages and settlements yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought it was great. So. I loved it, yeah. but overall, it gets an 8.6, so it didn't get the OFP. No, it was endorsed, close though. It was but close. But it is a great It's a, it's a game. fun game. It's a different take mm -hmm. on Catan. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Okay, yeah. all, right, all right, so what's the next one? Next one is Challengers from mm -hmm. Z-Man Games, mm -hmm. and it's basically just a tournament play style game. It's kind of a party game mm -hmm. where everybody gets, you know, uh, kind of like a, um, uh, like a, I guess a park, yeah, a little park, a park, a little yep. park, and then you get different cards, mm -hmm. and you fight to get the flag on every little park, mm -hmm. and everyone just, you start with eight people, and you go down to two, and then the last two people, you know, battle it out. But it can go from, you know, eight, six, four, whatever, but it's a nice little <laughs> tournament game mm -hmm. where to see, you know, you know, try to, who got the better cards, yeah. you know, so I, it's, a, it's a fun game. I mean, I thought it was it's a fun, fun game. and yeah. it's great if you have a lot of people who want to play, yes. but I think I gave it a low score Why? because I mean the artwork wasn't that great. It was it was average. Was, it was average. And yeah. I mean yeah. you gotta have so many people to play it. It's no, not something. No. Yeah, I mean yeah, playing play with least two four. people. It, it, yeah, yeah, you need four. Two, yeah, you need four. And it doesn't four. work. So you yeah. need a few people to play it you need four. to make it you know a fun yeah. game. So I only gave true. it a seven. I gave it a seven. I gave it eight point eight. Because mm. I mean okay. if you get the right number of people. Mm -hmm. And you have all these different type of cards you can put in. Mm -hmm. You got different decks of cards that yeah. you can use. And you know, he's like, hey, you know, like I got a three. Can you beat the three? And someone beats the three at four. And, yeah. then, and the flag goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then the last person that got it, you know, because you can't really, you know, it's really, it's kind of like random and it chance. Is. It is. But it's fun, random and chance. Mm -hmm. and, and I like that. So, and this is like a little fun party game. It's really a party game. Yeah. It really is. That you can well, play like tournament style. Because well, you can get another box and you can have what 16 people yeah, play. So you I know. I guess so. I mean, I think you like those type yeah. of games a little bit more yeah, than I do. I do. So that's why I got my score. Yeah. But the overall score for Challengers is 7.9. Ooh, okay. And I gotta let you guys know. Okay. We didn't share our scoring for the criteria. No. We only shared our overall score, yes. and then I made the averages for us. Yes. But so now we get a chance to discuss why we gave yeah. the score that we yeah. gave yeah. with yeah. you. So we're really discussing these uh, the criteria scoring for the first time yes. with you guys. Yes. So I'm. I'm. Yeah. Challenges okay. was cool. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's cool. It's a cool party game, kind of sorta. You know, you know that I, everybody I, I can do it, I tournaments. Give it good, I didn't give it high marks. It kind of got seven across the board for Ooh, me. Ooh, okay. Yeah. It kind of got nines across the board for me. Mm, yeah, okay. yeah. All right. All right, so next up is Clank Catacomb Woo! from Renegade Games. Here we go. And I gave it a 9.2. I got a nine. Okay. I All right. So love, we're, we're I love the, right the game. Area. Okay. You, and now together. this is Clank, where you're going into a mm -hmm. dungeon to steal stuff from a dragon, mm -hmm. and you got to it's, it's push your luck. Yeah, it's, it's push your luck. But in this one, it's different because mm -hmm. instead of just having a board. You know, like all the other clanks do, you got tiles. And you make so, your own board. Yeah, you make your own board. And then you have to, you know, wherever you move, uh -huh. you got to put another tile down. So mm -hmm. you're really exploring, you are exploring. the dungeon. And, and it's, it's so random. Yes. And, you know, you don't know what's going to come up next. So you don't know what tile 
how you're going to put down. Because yeah. in the original plank, you see the board. You can kind of plan out where you want to go. Yeah. With this one, you can't plan. No, you Because you don't know plan. what tile's going to go down. You're not com you cannot plan. Yeah, and then you got to decide where you're going to put that tile. Yes. And where you're going. And then they added ghosts to it. Ghosts that try to kill you all the time. <laughs> try to kill you. And ghosts that try to and, kill and you. And it's so easy to get trapped. Yeah. And not get out. Because we've done that before. You've gotten trapped several times. Yes. Yeah. But I, I like the challenge of it. Yes. I like the challenge of it. Yeah. And that's why I gave it a high score. Because I thought it was fun. I like that it's, you know, the modular board. And it's, it's you know, you can change it up. And yeah. it's got a lot of replayability to it. It does. It does. It's a good one. Now, I gave it a, a, a kind of a low score on mm -hmm. gameplay because, you know, the the randomness yeah. of the tile, yeah. you know, you might not get mm -hmm. any, you know, you know, the things that you need. Like yeah. that one time we played, yeah. it was it took forever yeah. to get, you know, the tiles the, uh, we needed the tiles yeah, need to get true. the artifacts. Because you got to get an artifact mm -hmm. to get out. You know, yeah. that really helps you. You got to get an artifact to get out. And we, yeah. It took forever to get the artifacts and we were getting killed. I know. Left, right, and center. But I still enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. I it was still cool. enjoyed it. It's but okay. we love Clank anyway. Yes, we so. love Clank. Yeah. So this one is going to get an OFPG endorsement. Yes. Because the overall score for Clank Catacombs is a 9.1. It's in there. Yeah. There you go. OBG endorsed. Yep. All right. And next up on our list. Oh, here we go. It's Creature Comforts by KTBG. Yes. Yes. Creature Comforts. I don't even yes. know what to tell you other than it's a 10. Uh, it is a 10. I, I did 9.4. It is a 10. I love Creature yeah. Comfort. Yes. Those little critters are so cute. Yes. It's colorful. Yes. It's fun. It's worker placement. Yes. It does all those things I like. You've got cards that you have yes. that are, the artwork is just gorgeous. Yes. Love. And don't let the cuteness of the animals fool you. Yes. This game is strategic. It and is. you really got to think. What you doing? Yes. You got to think. And we've played it several times yes. with different people. Yes. They always love it. Creature Conference, it's a hit. It's, t it's a 10. Well, I did a 9.4. Okay. Yeah, wow. what, what did you give it a lower score? What? What, what was your low score? I just did nines across. Oh, you went nines across Yeah, the I did board? nines across. So I did tens yeah. across the board. Yeah, well, yeah. I gave it a 10 for theme. The theme yeah. is really nice. Yeah, the theme's really nice. But Creature Comes is a, gr is a really, really fun it game. It is a fun game. And, 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 you know, when you first put it down, you're like, oh, that's some cute little it's creature. It's so cute. And you think it's going to be a kid game? Yeah. It's not a kid's game. Yeah. You and, really got to work at doing, you know, you know, when you're trying to gather up, you know, uh, different resources and stuff from the board yeah. game, you got to decide where you're going to go, where you're going to put your dice. Mm -hmm. You know, in the different places, because you got to really work those dice. Well, you got to think you know. about it. You got to think about it. Like the creatures are gathering stuff they need yes. for the winter. Yes. And they want to be comfortable creature yes. comfort. Yes. So you want to think about all the things you want your little creature to have. You know, I like to play with the raccoons because they have the little paws and they yeah. go out and they get stuff. And you may want to get them a blanket or you want to store up their food mm -hmm. or a rocking chair. Yeah. You always go for the board game. Yes, I do. I like the so board game. So while they're in there, uh, you know, hunkered down for the winter, they're playing board games yes. you know but i try to get them the stuff that they need like a blanket yeah you know? but i love how it's you know it's also it's it's worker placement it is worker and then placement. also dice placement dice, placement. dice worker placement yes. and you can mediate the dice yes. when you can so it's a, yes. a really fun game, fun game. set well collection i mean you got it set collection mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of stuff then you yeah. have the traveling you know the the creature that always i mean the creature that always mm -hmm. travels and yes. stuff and, and it's a different traveler every time coming yes. to the town and you get and it gives mm -hmm. you different things you can do i mean it's a, it's a really fun game. Fun game. Really do enjoy Love it. it. It is yes. OFPG and it's endorsed. It was all, it's been a hit. Yes, it's it, OFPG it's one endorsed yes. with a 9.7. Yes. Love the game. Love the game. Yes. Definitely love it. Yes. Love it, love it, love it. All right, next all right. one. Uh, I guess this is me. Yes. Yeah, this is well, me. I played it with you. You but did. You did. Yes, you yes. loved it more. I loved it more because mm -hmm. I gave Dead Reckoning mm -hmm. from AEG a pirate game where it's from, uh, you know, it's kind of like from the guy who made, you know, Mystic Veil, vale, where you put the cards yeah. in to really kind of upgrade yeah. your cards and your characters. Mm -hmm. And we do that to, uh, you know, Dead Reckoning in a pirate atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Then you go into different islands, you know, majority rule on the different islands to try to take over yeah. and really just be the best pirate you can be. Mm -hmm. And I gave that game. They're reckoning a nine. Okay. I enjoy playing it with you. Yes. And I did enjoy the artwork on it. Yes. The, artwork is the cool. gameplay was good. Yes. Uh, the theme. They stayed true to the theme. They stayed Every, true to the you theme. You know, work together. Yes. But I gave it an 8.4. Wow. Because I said I gave it a lower mark on like the replay 
I don't know, maybe because I'm not into pirate games. Man, I, I you think know? That it's, it's just not your style. Yeah, but, yeah. but it, the game as, as a whole is a nice looking game. Yeah. And it was fun. Yeah, because, you know, like, I didn't like Mystic Veil with mm-hmm. all, you know, different changing mm-hmm. and, like, the little car sleeves and yeah. stuff and changing your character and stuff. Yeah. But this one I like. Yeah. They got it, he, you know, I think it's John D. Claire. He got it right mm-hmm. this time, and yeah. I really enjoyed it. And I even played it solo. Yeah. So I really enjoyed the game, so I gave it a nine. So yeah, yeah. Our combined score for Dead Reckoning is an 8.6. Seven. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. It's, still, it's a fun game. I really yes. do like it. It's a fun game. Right. Oh, here we go. So now we're on number here 14. Here we go. Here we go. Number 14 is Decorum yes. from Floodgate Games. Yes. It is the one and only co-op. One and only. <laughs> that I really, truly like. One and only family. And I enjoy playing it. Yes. And because of that, yes. I gave it a 9.4. Woo! 9.4. I gave it a 9.6. It is a fun it game. A fun Are you talking game. about it's a, a, a passive aggression? <laughs> it's passive aggression all day long, trying to get that room right. You putting stuff in a room and like, wait a minute, I don't like what you did. Why you don't like what I did? I don't like what you did. Could you, you know, you can't say nothing, so you're trying to change it. It's yeah. a puzzle. Well, it's a beautiful puzzle game. Well, what I Love like it. about it is that you have your own set of criteria. Yes. And then all of your opponents have criteria. Yes. And so to make the game work or to win the game as a team, everybody has to have the same things that they need or have to have what they need in their rooms. Yes. It has to work together. Yes. So like you were just saying that, you know, I may go ahead and decorate my room and think that I've met all my criteria, but what I have in my room may conflict with one of my opponents. So they're going to tell me, no, that's not going to work. Don't like it. You know, so now I got to figure out, well, what's not working? They yes. can't tell me. They can't tell you. Until, so I got to like, go change stuff. At one point, you can tell them, like, okay, this you give yeah. them, like, one of the things. Like, yeah. this is what I can't have you do on one of the things. Yeah. And then you try to figure it out. Yeah. So, but yeah. verbally, they can't tell verbally you Verbally, they can't so tell you, yeah. you've got to work together. And eventually, if you figure out the exact things you need and they figure out what they need, you win the game as a whole. That's yes. the co-op part. Yes. But I loved it. And I know the artwork was basic. But I thought the artwork I, was cute. I think the artwork worked. I thought for what cute. it had to do, yeah. it worked. The whole game just worked. It, it now, worked. Now, to be honest, I gave the artwork the lowest score of all. I didn't. I did, but it, everything it else me. was totally high, yeah. and that's where I came up with my 9.4. I got 9.6. And yes. so Decorum, as an overall combined rating, yes. is OFPG endorsed Boom. with a 9.5. Boom! There 9. we go. 9.5. And yes. family, a co-op game. A co-op game a co-op that I game. like. Uh, All right, so now we're at number 15. All right, Dog Park. Dog Park. From Birdwood Games. Mm -hmm. Now, I had fun with this. I did too. I had fun. I loved it. Yeah, just the thing is, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of basic when you're just going around. You're going through the park. You're going through the park. It's not much. You're just kind of doing set collection with the cards. You you, uh, draft, you know, dogs. Yeah. And you put the dogs, you got to walk the dogs. And you got to, you know, give, get resources in order to feed the dogs. Feed them, get them toys. Get them toys. Yeah. and things like that whatever their cards mm-hmm. ask mm-hmm. for so it's kind of a you know gateway it's not kind that, of yes, sort of it's, it's a not gateway that, yeah. game it's not that gateway. far but that's what I liked about yeah, it yeah. it kind of reminded me of Cat Lady yeah kind you of you know sort but of, I yeah. thought it was fun yeah. I thought it was a really good production it's colorful great it's production it's colorful yeah. Uh, so I gave it nines across the board, and the overall score for me is a nine. I thought it was a great game. I gave I gave it eight to, uh, a, a couple of eights, mm-hmm. nine. A theme is a ten because it is a dog it, it's park. Not, theme is on and point. And I gave it an eight point six. Okay. Eight point six. Well, then our overall score for dog park came up to eight point eight, so it fell yes. just shy. Yeah, just shy. Of the OFPG and but it's still a good game. Yeah. It's still a really really fun game. It's just yes. shy. All right. All right. The next so, one. Uh, Dulce. Dulce. Dulce from Stronghold Games. Yes. Well, let me just tell you, I was disappointed by the game. Yes. You know, because I thought it was, you know, just straight up, I thought mm. it was a lot, it's going to be some player interaction. Yeah. It's basically a solo game yes. for everybody. Yes. You know, the little interaction you have is, mm. you know, everybody's, you know, you get a different card yeah. and everybody got to play the same cards and work on their own little boards, you know, yeah. doing, you know, putting, you know, uh, resources mm-hmm. out to get more resources. Yeah. And I wasn't just, a fan. I was, I was disappointed because I wanted to play it so badly yes, because it yes. was called Dulce. Yes. Which in Spanish means sweet or yes. candy. Yeah. So I was like, oh, OK, I want to play this game. It's going to be sweet. Yes. It was not sweet. No. I, I did not like the gameplay at all. Yes. 
Now the artwork, that artwork was, great. That was the best part yeah, of the game. Artwork was I love the different desserts. Really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Different desserts on yeah. the cards that they had for you. Yeah, I thought that looked cool. great. Yeah. But the gameplay sucked. Like you were saying, you're really playing by yourself, and I didn't care for that. Yeah. It, so, it, you, you, it, you're like you're playing your thing. Yeah. I'm playing mine, mm -hmm. and I really can't affect you too uh, at all. Yeah. And I'm just over here, you yeah, know. So, so yeah. I, I wasn't too happy with it. Uh, some now people for, love it. Now I, for I a solo game. Great. Yeah. I mean, you can you can solo it all yeah. day long. Yeah. It's a solo game is good, but mm -hmm. for you know playing with different people, no. Yeah, I didn't no. get it. So, so I gave it a six point two. Ooh, you kind of okay. Yeah. I gave it a seven point four. Mm. I gave seven point four. All right. You know, yeah. And our overall score for Dulce is a six point eight. Six point eight. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the next one. It's Endless Winter. Interest, Endless Winter. Paleo Americans. Yes, from Fantasia Games. Yes. Now, straight off the board, I enjoyed it. I loved it. I, I love the game. It is not an easy game. No, it's not an easy game. It's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. It's worker placement. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, a set collection. Yes. Uh, it's moving around, uh, you know, the bo uh, moving around a board. Yes. I mean, there's a lot going on. And that, that's the one thing I give it a ding for because yeah. there's so much it's going so much. on. Me too. Me I mean, too. some things you can take out and just make it a module because they got modules yeah. that you can add to the game. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like they added a whole bunch they, in they, there they, anyway. It was too much. They were doing too much. They were doing too much. Now, I did love it. I yes. gave it a high score. Yes, I did too. Uh, the artwork is wonderful. Yes. I love the components. The production of the game was beautifully yes. done. It's, it's a difficult game, which I love a game that challenges yes, me. Yes. So that was great. Yes. So in the end, I gave it a, a 9.6. I loved it. I gave it a 9.2. It's okay. a really good game. I just think they just put too much in there. Yeah, yeah. They could have left out something. Mm -hmm. But I definitely want to go back again. Well, I, I want to play it again. Several times and, I want to go back. And that's one of one of our criteria. Yes. Does it have the replay value? And it do does. you desire? Yes. I gave that a 10 yes. because I do want to try it again. I want to try it again yeah. too. I want to keep on playing it because it seems like yeah. so much fun. I think so well, too. Well, it seems like it is fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, so definitely fun. Endless Winter. It's a good one. It's a good, it's a good one. one. So overall, it gets an OFPG endorsed, and it is 9.4. Yes, and it's well-deserved. Well-deserved. It is a fun, well fun deserved. game. Yes. Yes, All yes. right, so next up is Familiar Tales yes. from Plaid Hat Games. Yes. Yeah. I, well, I, okay, I enjoy okay, okay. it. I enjoy it's, it. It's a co-op. It so is a co-op. Did you I, hit it? Okay, look. It's a co-op. Yeah. What I thought was the best of the game to be was the theme. I thought the theme, theme was came really out. Yeah, cute. I love the theme. Really well done, you yeah, know. Yeah, because in the game is that, mm -hmm. you know, you're a collection of minions. Mm -hmm. You know, because something happened to your, your wizard. Yeah. I think he got killed. Yeah. Yeah, something happened to the wizard. And, and you're a minions trying to protect this little baby mm -hmm. that one day is going to become the queen of uh, the rule over this land mm -hmm. and you gotta influence her yeah. and you you basically she grows up and whatever you kind of influenced her with mm -hmm. is gonna what she's gonna do is she gonna be a bad you know ruler of the lands or is she gonna I'm be good. a good ruler of yeah. the lands and it's basically it's co-op mm -hmm. it's uh app driven yes and you're basically going on adventures mm -hmm. you know here and there in a, a kind of adventure book well for me you know. it goes back to you know with, with uh, in this winter it was just too much. It was you got the app. It's co-op. Like you it got though. a storybook. It's cool. Uh, it's fun. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff. You know, they have a lot of games like that now. So it's, it was yeah. cool. It was but cool. again, the, the theme was great. Yeah. Uh, it was colorful. The art, um, the art was the good. The art was great. Yes. And the miniatures yeah. was really cool. And I, I had fun with it. Yeah. I don't know if I want to play it again, but mm. I had fun with it. Yeah. Um, so I only gave it a 7.8. Woo! I gave it a 9. Because okay. it's a lot of fun. So like well, see, I like co-ops and yeah, things, adventures do. like that. <laughs> you do. You know, I like adventures like that. So, yeah, I gave it a 9. Yeah, yeah. so the overall score for that one is an 8.4. Yes, but definitely it's a fun game. Yeah, so now we're down to our last two yes. for this episode. Yes. This will be our first 20 that we're going yes. over. Yes, yes. So, next up is First Empires from Sandcastle Games. Yes. And the designer on this is Eric B. Vogel, which we love Eric. Yeah, we do he love Eric. He does some great yes, stuff. Yes, he does, yeah. And, and I enjoyed Empires, First Empires. I did too. Yeah, it's I one of those it. two that you've got yeah. this area majority thing going on. So I enjoyed that. I did, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a it has a little replayability. It you know, you can go mm -hmm. back to it. And I think- I the, wanna go back to it. You no, know, the sad thing about it is that, and the art is great. Art is love great. Art. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the sad thing about it, it came out so early. Yeah. A lot of people forgot about it. Got it got overlooked. Yeah, it got yeah. overlooked big time. Because, yeah, I mean, it came like in like 
January mm -hmm. of last year, mm -hmm. and I think you know so many games came out. They just people just like it, it oh, didn't get enough know. love. No, it, it didn't. It, it needed more yeah. pub, and it needs more, more love promotion for this yes. game because it was fun. And it's one of those games that I think about, and it's like oh, I want to play it again. Yes. Yes. And that's why I gave it a high score. Yeah, I gave it a score of a nine. I got an eight point eight. See, so we're almost there. Yeah, together, we're almost there. Yeah, because it was yeah. fun. It was a fun game, and I, and I definitely would. It's gonna stay in the collection. Yeah. It's going to stay in the collection, yeah. and I, I really want to play it some more. Yeah. And it's not that big of a game. It's, it's a, not it's, small. It's a small box yeah. that looks like almost like a day, Days of Wonder game. Yeah. It looks really cool, and it's really good production yeah. value. Mm -hmm. And I like it. You know, yeah. it's a, like majority, yeah. you know, area control, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed that. Really well, when enjoy I get that. a game that I think about and go, oh, I would love to try it again, and yeah. that's definitely something that made a mark on me. Yes. So I know there's something I want to try, and if I feel that way, then I think it's a good game. Yeah. And that's why I gave it a Nine, and you gave it a what? I gave it an 8.8. .8. All right, so it ended up with an 8.9 as our overall score yes. for that particular game. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Okay, the last one on our list, number 20. Yes. Is First Rat First by Pegasus Spiel. Yes. Love. Love it. Cute, cute, Love cute. It. Don't let the cuteness <laughs> Fool you. And I don't like rats, but I thought it was so yes. cute and colorful. Yes. And then the premise that these rats, they read some comics and they, they think comics. that the, the moon is made of cheese. <laughs> so they're going to try to get a rocket ship. They can't to read. Get them to, they, well, they read the comics yeah. and they get a rocket ship to get them to the, to the moon. Well, I guess maybe they didn't read it. They looked at, no, the pictures, they're looking at the pictures. And they figured out, oh, the moon is made of cheese. Yeah. And I love the way you have to pull your rats out to try to get more rats to help you yes. get to the rocket ship. And yes. I thought it was really well done. It was really, really mm -hmm. well done. I really really liked the game yes it's and i gave it some high marks you did and it's it was a really fun game mm -hmm. you know how you know you start off with a couple of rats uh -huh. and you got to bring in more rats yes to kind of help you out and mm -hmm. you know get a family of rats mm -hmm. and then you got to end up you know when you're going around you go one way yes. one way up one this way. board mm -hmm. to get resources and things like mm -hmm. that and you have to put all the rats in like certain areas yes. in order for it to, to keep to going activate each other. yeah to yes. activate each mm -hmm. other so it's a really fun game it keeps you on your toes it does. and it's really cool you know like you, you do other things like you got to read more comics so you can do more yes. things <laughs> and it, it's, it's, it's a fun game mm -hmm. worker placement worker placement I, I like it I, I, I really do like rat. it I enjoy it so yeah. I loved it so much I gave it a 9.8 I got a 9.4 9.4. So it's so, a really fun. Don't let the cuteness <laughs> fool you. Yes. It, yes. Yes. Play that game. It's a fun game. So with our two scores. Yes. It is going to be an OFPG endorsed game. Yes. With a final score of 9.6. Excellent game. Yes. Excellent. It's a fun game. Love yes, it. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. So that's our first that's 20. It. That's it. And at the end, we will show you my overall score, yes. mix overall score, yes. and then our combined score and show you the ones that are getting the OFPG endorsed yes. game. Now, the ones in the eights, you know, yes. they're still, hey, they're not going out of yeah. a collection. Well, what we did, well, we, yeah. we decided that games that, that had a nine or a yes. ten yes. would be the ones that we just say these games are just wonderful yes. you should take a look at them no matter what now, even if it's an eight you know yeah the eights are good as well but it's just something about it that just couldn't push us over to the nine mark don't know what it was yeah you know because you had your opinions i had yeah. mine but in the end when we put our scores together if that game got nine or ten it gets what we call the OFPG endorsed. And, and i'm looking at you know mm -hmm. like you know challengers is 7.9 i still want to keep that yeah i still want to keep that well, so we're going to keep all yeah. of them well, we're gonna keep all of them, um, but um, you don't um, think so? Oh no! Okay, I don't well, know. I don't know. we're well, gonna talk on something. Well, we we'll, talk we'll on talk about that later. No, we're gonna talk on something. We'll talk yeah. about yeah, that later. Yeah, we're gonna later. talk on something. Yeah. So that's yeah. it for this episode. Yes. And so that's everything. That's Hope everything. Hope you guys enjoyed our rating system. Yes. This is the first of three, so be sure to come back next week to hear what we think about 20 more games from and, 2022. And definitely tell us what you think about, yes, our, you know, yes. what we said and yes. our list and everything. Tell us if we kind of, you know, crazy or you, <laughs> we, we made some wrong decisions, but are you you like what we said to us in the comments? Let us know. Yeah. Talk to us, family. Talk to us. Now, Starla, where can we find some of our great merch out there? Well, if you'd like a t-shirt yes. or a pillow yes. or a tumbler, yes. you know, go to Spring. Support the channel. Get a t-shirt. Yes. Now, Starla, you gave us the challenge. Yes. The challenge this year of getting 30,000 subscribers. But if we want to do that, where can they find RPG? 
Well, if you're looking for Our Family Plays Games, yes. you can find us on Facebook, yep. Instagram, yep. Twitter, yes. right here on YouTube. Right here. And if you're in Omaha, Nebraska. That's local family. You can find us on Cox Channel 22. Yes. Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. Yes. And Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. Family, thank you so much for coming for our first part of our big ratings of the games of 2022. So you gotta come back, you know, for a couple more episodes to, to let us finish it up. But let us know in the comments what you think. We love hearing from you and just talking to you back. And also, if you got any questions that you wanna uh, just send to Ask RPG, we will answer them. But family, there's one thing, and one thing we want you to always know. We love you. Bye, Bye now. Everybody.